Um, I think we need Ms. Kassler, though. Good morning, ma'am. Hello. Have a seat again. Yes. Good morning. Have a seat. Make sure, make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Just before we broke yesterday, the state had finished their initial questioning of Ms. Kessler, and that means it's now the defense's turn to ask some questions. You may begin when you're ready. Ms. Kessler, um, I want to start out by going through your testimony from yesterday just to reestablish what you said on the stand, make sure we're in agreement with what that was. If you disagree with anything I'm asserting, by all means, please tell me, okay? You mean from, from the very beginning? Um, so, yeah, so we're going to start out with your testimony was that you'd met Mr. Smith before, right? Yeah. And that was back uh, sometime around September 2019. Yes. And on the night in question, uh, he picked you up uh, around the uh, cars on Gamble. Yes, sir. And that at the time, uh, you were in active addiction and you were smoking crack actively. Mm hmm And then... Yesterday, you told the jury that he was asking if you knew any of the younger girls who you considered to be your nieces. Yeah, I remember her name. Her name was Sonia. He asked me if I knew of a, if I knew how to find Sonia. And then you said you went all over with him, right? You drove all over with him. Yeah. Yeah, and you went to the baseball field behind the Sullivan Arena, over to Ship Creek, and then you ended up at the Shell Station. We went to the behind the Sullivan Arena too. Right. And we we um, drove. Um, I think out towards the airport or somewhere too. Okay, so now, at what point did you drive out towards the airport? Um, right before we went, that was like um after okay the first it was Macaulay and then the Sullivan Arena and then from there drove out like towards the airport and then on the way back went to the trail station. And that's when he dropped me off, he asked me where I stayed. I said, I stayed in the woods at Shiloh. Okay, so so now is your recollection that you did or didn't go to Ship Creek? Yeah, we went, went for driving down there too. Okay. And at the time, not only were you actively smoking crack, you were also drinking vodka and you had a 211 Blackberry. So you're, you were drinking that night. Yeah. He told you he was leaving town and he asked you if you had any money and where you lived? Yes, sir. Uh, tried to get money in the Shell station. He tried two different cards and they didn't work. Yes, sir. And then while he was in the Shell station getting money, you dropped your phone in his truck. Yes, sir. And when you went to pick it up, you picked up two phones. Yes, sir. And you kept both phones. Yes, sir. Didn't turn either of them on to determine whose was whose, just kept both. Um, No, they were dead. Okay. And then, um, so you knew that one of those was not your phone at the time, right? Yeah. And you took it anyway, just in case. Yeah. And you said at that point, when you bent over to get the phone, you got sick. I got sick. Um, so I know that term can be used in a few different ways. And I just like to bile, bile came up. Okay. And then when you were being examined by the state, you mentioned that when you picked up the phone, you had a feeling about it. Yeah. And then when Mr. Smith came back into the truck, uh, he asked where the phone was. He said he needs it and it's important. He said no. He said his work was on the phone. That's what he said. And then you told him that it fell out of his pocket at the Sullivan Arena? Um, yeah. Um, had you ever gotten out of the truck in the Sullivan Arena? Yeah. Okay. And so did he, did he ask you, if you saw it fall out of my pocket, why didn't you tell me? No, when you close the car, when you close the truck door, is what I said. Okay, but you didn't tell him about it at the time. You know, he, did, he didn't ask you. You didn't tell me about that at the time, right? He asked me if I seen the phone, and um, 
I said, well, when we was leaving the Sullivan Ring, and when you slammed your door, it sounded like something fell out. Okay. And then this is where it got a little bit squirrely for me, at least. Um, got out of the Shell Station. I was like, did, did you get out of the truck and leave at the Shell Station, or did he let you out of the Shiloh Baptist? He dropped me off at the Shiloh Church. Okay. Because initially, when the state asked you about that yesterday, you pretty vehemently denied it. What? That he let you out of the Shiloh Baptist Church, but now he did let you out of the Shiloh Baptist Church. Yeah, when they asked me, I got I got my words mixed up. I said, no, he dropped me up at the Shell Station. And then I said, no, he dropped me up at the, at the Shiloh Church. And I waited till he left before I went across the street and went across the bridge and went to the in the woods. Okay. And you said the whole thing took about an hour and a half. Huh? You said the whole thing took about an hour and a half yesterday. Do you recall that? At the court here? Yesterday, when you were testifying on direct, you said that your entire encounter with Mr. Smith lasted about an hour and a half. Do you recall that? No, I said he picked me up about 930 at night. And when he dropped me off, he said that he had to. It was probably about four o'clock in the morning because he said he had to catch a plane in two hours. OK, so it took longer than an hour and a half. It took. I said I was with him for half the night. Okay, so that would be two and a half plus four, six and a half hours. So now you're testifying that you were with him for six and a half hours. I said that I was with him for half the night, is what I said. Uh, and then you went back to your tent from there. Yes, sir. You plugged in your feet, then you went and you plugged in the phone to the mattress store, looked through it, and you said you immediately sobered up. Yeah. And you said it had 46 pictures on it and. Please clarify, you had one long video? Yeah. One video? Okay. So you looked at the phone, and the phone had 46 pictures in one video. Yeah, three days worth of filming. And you said, upon looking at it, that you recognized the woman on the video as someone you got out of jail with a couple of days prior? Yes. And the first time you looked at it, you recognized her. No, she she was just beat up. You could uh, saw purple, black, and blue well, eyes know. all swollen, almost swollen shut. Right, well, you just said no. I did you, no. I did not that. say that. You said that, and you agreed with it. Did you recognize her when you turned on the phone? No, I did not. I said that yesterday. You said yesterday that you recognized her when you turned on the phone. No, I did not. And then you showed the videos to your sister-in-law, Tracy Thompson. And she encouraged you to destroy them. Yes. But instead, you went to Dr. Thornquist and called the police from there. Yes, sir. Uh, you left Dr. Thornquist's office with the phone. And then you stole an SD card the next day and put the videos onto the SD card. Objection. The states are testimony. She can. I'm asking her to click confirm or deny it, Judge. Objections overruled, but it does need to be clear that uh, you're asking her to, whether you're asking her to confirm or deny. Okay. I'm also going to object to a compound question. He had her going three, four. Okay. So you left Dr. Thornquist's office with the phone, right? Yes, sir. And then you went to Fred Meyer and you stole an SD card. Yes, sir. And you put some. Dude, that's of all that was on that phone. Mm hmm. And then when you did that, was it that later that day or the next day that you'd gone to Fred Myers to get the SD card? <laughs> I think you're confusing yourself. Um, no, I said, but I went to my doctor's, it was the next day. No, it was no, it was yeah, it was the next day when I when I put the stuff on the SD card. It was the next day. When no, when I went to talk to you went to your doctors the next day and on that day you put it. You you're you're trying to you're you're trying to mix my shit up and then you know let's wait till the witness is done answering and then any in or one after another, any objections or clarifications can be requested. 
Were you done answering that? Yeah, I'm done okay. answering. Okay, and, and just so we make sure we have a clear record, I, I would like to go back through that one more time. So you get the phone, you have the phone in your possession the night that you're with Mr. Smith, yeah. right? And then the next day you go to Dr. Thornquist's office. Yes. And from Dr. Thornquist's office, you call the police. Yes. And then you leave Dr. Thornquist's office. Yeah. With the phone. Yes. From there, on that same day. You I went to, to Fred Myers. Yes. Okay, and that's where you got the SD card. Yes. Put the videos onto the SD card. I put everything. Yes, that's all that was on that phone was the three days from September third. He picked her up till September fifth. It was three days worth of videos and and um like forty six thirty six pictures. Okay. And now, did you transfer those all at once? One mass. Transfer? Just one thing. Mm -hmm. And you also viewed on the phone some evidence that it had been on the Wi-Fi at the Marriott. Yes. And was that a, a picture that you saw? I think it was. I think it was a screenshot. You think it was a screenshot of uh, like a him logging on to Wi-Fi at the hotel. Okay. So if you transferred everything from the phone onto the SD card, that should have transferred as well. Yes, it was. Including the video. Yes. And then you you titled the SD card. I titled the Homicide at Marriott Hotel, Midtown, Anchorage, Alaska. Yes, I did. All right. And then as you are at that point walking back to your tent, you tripped and you dropped both the new phone your boyfriend got you and this one? No, it was late at later at night. Okay. It was dark. The leaves were coming down. There was uh, broken branches, trees down. You should walk through the woods sometimes. Maybe you'll see what I mean. Okay. So, it's dark. You're walking through the woods. You have both your phone and yes, phone, and you drop both of them. Yeah, I tripped. And you picked up your phone. No, I tripped. I lost both of the phones. Okay, so you never picked yours up either. Can you see at nighttime when it's pitch black? asking after you tripped did you recover either of the phones no how many times do i gotta say it but you did not drop the sd card no because the sd card wasn't in the phone And you remember back four years ago, you gave statements to the uh, the investigators, right? I remember everything. Do you remember everything? I remember everything. And they interviewed you a couple times. Mm -hmm. And you were at that point not fully honest with them about it. No, I was not fully honest because I was scared. So, for example, now... When you talk to the police, it was towards the end of September, right? It was still that same month, end of September, early October, right? Yeah. And when you were talking to them, it was, I think you just said it was like the day after you picked up the SD card or the day you picked up the SD card, the day after you got in the phone. What now? How long after you picked up this phone did you talk to the police um the next day a couple of days and when you talked to the police the initial conversations uh you told them that you'd been clean off of crack for six months do you recall that yeah but i wasn't smoking crap there's other stuff you could smoke you know that well you just said earlier today that you were actively smoking crap <laughs> yes i was and you had not been clean for six months. Um, I'm a crack, yeah. When we started the testimony today, you recall yourself saying you were actively using crack at the time that this occurred. Oh my gosh, yes. And when you talked to the police four years ago, you told them you'd been clean for six months. Off a of crack. 
Right. And you told that to them twice. Yeah. And today you told the jury that you were actively using it at the time this was happening. Yes. And in fact, when you talked to them a few days ago, when they served the subpoena, you told them that you'd been high for about two weeks. When? Prior to this. Clarify. Prior, yeah. When you talked to the police, remember they served you the subpoena? Um, it was last Friday? I didn't see anything about being high. You did not say anything about being high when they served you the subpoena? Um, no, I haven't been drinking. The only thing I've been high on is cigarettes and weed. Now, but when you talked to them on Friday... I didn't see nothing about me being high. You told them four years ago... Four years ago. That when this was happening, you had been high for two weeks. Yes. Right. Ma'am, wait till he finishes the question and it'll be a lot he's easier. Just right on. He's just uh, getting on my nerves. He, he's got to finish his question first. And then you also talked to the officers four years ago. I'm going to take you back four years now. At the end of September 2019 and then early October 2019, you remember you did those two, well, multiple interviews with them. Yeah. And in the October 2nd one, they asked you where all you had gone with Mr. Smith, right? Yeah. And... You initially told them that he picked you up to do a date and you went to the Shell station. Do you recall saying that? No, he did not pick me up for a date. He picked me. He was looking for somebody else. He asked me if I was doing anything, if I'd like to go drive around. And I said, sure, why not? I ain't got nothing else better to do. Would you recognize your own voice on a recording, do you think? Yes. Um, he picked me up. I was on my way home. It was raining. And he picked me up. He wanted to do a date. Yeah, he, he wanted, wanted to, to the yeah. Chevron. He wanted I mean, to, to the Shell I station. A date with him. And I'm sorry, if you could wait until the recording is over to start talking, uh, the jury needs to hear this. They need to hear... The recording, and they need to hear you, ma'am. So. Okay. Um, he picked me up. I was on my way home. It was raining. And he picked me up. He wanted to do a date. He went to the Chevron, I mean, to the Shell station, and it was in his car on his dash. And I just picked it up. That's how I got it. Um, so that was your voice, right? Yeah. And that was you telling the officers that he picked you up to do a date, right? Well, that was probably his initial, but I wasn't going to do Yes, but I wasn't going to do no date with him. Mm -hmm. So you did tell the officers that he picked you up to do a date. Well, that's what he was looking for was a date. And then you also told the officers that he picked you up from, uh, he picked you up, you went to the Sullivan Arena and to the Shell Station and dropped you off at the Shiloh Church. You didn't mention having gone to the airport. You didn't mention having gone to Ship Creek, right? I didn't say. He drove towards the airport. You know, there's like a there's woods. There's like a place where you could pull off on the side of the road and park, you know? So, so after he picked you up, you went straight to the shell or, or no, you went to the Sullivan's? Yeah. He asked you about the date. Yeah. You didn't really answer. How long were you at the Sullivan Arena? For like maybe 15 minutes. And do you know where on what side of the Sullivan? So you know you have the Sullivan and you have that ice rink. Yeah. The four ice rinks and then you have the Ben Boki. Where do you think you were in relation to all that? In the back of the, okay. There's the Sullivan and then, then there's the hockey building. Mm -hmm. Back behind, behind the hockey building. Okay. The hockey building you're talking about what next to the Sullivan in the same parking lot? Yeah. So the the Ben Boki Ice Arena, maybe? The, is it a big large building? Yeah, it's a big it's where they play the inside hockey. Okay. So behind that? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what street you turned off? How you got there? Which way you went? Um 
Not really. Um, I think we just went down the highway. Okay. Alright. No, we went the other way. We came the other way. Which way is that? Do you recall? Um, the back to the other road. Not not the not the road where you turn off like um like if you're going towards my my because like not the road where you come down and it's Black Angus Road. Mm -hmm. Went the other way. Went down down the hill. A uh, big steep hill, or so, yeah, the okay. steep hill. Went down that hill and went this way, and then then we turned left and pulled in, and he pulled all the way back to the back of the um behind the behind the building. Okay, and parked in front of the um the um it's like people used to camp over there. Okay, and there's like a big dirt hill. Mm -hmm. Parked right there. Parked right there. And how long do you think you were there? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes. What did he say? What else did he say other than talking about a day? Did he say anything else that you remember? No, he didn't talk about nothing else. Did he talk about specifics about what he wanted to do? Anything like that? No. Okay. All right. And then, but then you said 15 minutes, and then where did he go from there? We went to the shell. To the shell station. Okay. Yeah. And I told him it was getting late and I had to get home soon. Okay. So how long after he comes out of the shell and he gets back in the truck what happens? He asked me where he wanted to drop me off at. Okay. And I said the same place where you picked me up and we got there. And but my nephew wasn't there. Okay. And there was nobody else out there. So I said, Well, better yet, can you drop me off at Shiloh Church? Mm -hmm. So he drove me and dropped me off at Shiloh Church. Okay. All right, there's no point during that. Did you mention? Uh, baseball field, Ship Creek, or the airport, right? I guess not. I must have forgot. And this was four years ago. You're saying this interview took place within days of when this allegedly happened, right? This interview back four years ago, you gave mere days after <laughs> this allegedly happened, correct? Yeah. You also, you told the jury, I think yesterday was an hour and a half. Today was half the night. Um, you know, 930. Well, maybe I got mixed up. I'd be drinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And then back oh, when you yes. talked to the investigators four years ago, when it was more fresh in your mind, uh, you said that he picked you up at 1030 and you dropped you off at 11, right? I don't remember. But you're going to play it back, so play it back, because I don't remember. Me or late in the it, it was, morning. It was or... late, late evening. It was probably it was probably about eleven o'clock when he dropped me off. Drop you off at the shell or at, at back at Shiloh. At the Shiloh. But it was before that that he went to the shell station. Is that where he picked you up at, or was it somewhere else? No, I was. Where he picked me up. He picked me up right, right where I showed you where I found the SIM card. He picked me up right there. Oh, at Thirteenth and. Right there in that okay. parking lot. So that you marked on the map. Right yeah. There. Right there in that parking lot, he picked me up. And what, what, you know, what time that was? Um, the liquor store was about ten thirty. About ten thirty p.m. Okay. Yeah, because the liquor store closed in uh, in a half hour, and my nephew. Mm -hmm. So now you said he picked you up at ten thirty and dropped you off at eleven, right? Did you hear yourself say that? Yeah, but I probably got it mixed up. Mm -hmm. And then. Remember when last Friday you were served a subpoena and the officer came and talked to you for a little bit? Mm -hmm. You don't remember on Friday that you were served a subpoena? Mm -hmm. uh, that one. <clears throat> Do you remember receiving it? No, no, I'm going to object. She was served a subpoena on Thursday. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got the recording on Friday. I apologize. Uh, she was interviewed remember, on Friday. Remember, get the subpoena on Thursday. Do you remember? Do you remember receiving a subpoena? Yeah. Officer knocking on your door. Do you remember which day I got it on? Talking to you, and when you talked to that officer, you said that you were with him for eighteen hours. It seemed like it. I was with him for half the night. Eighteen hours, half the night. <laughs> 
Those are that guy for like fucking 18 hours. They seem like 18 hours. I've been all over the place. So when you were talking about this incident, when you said 18 hours, right? <laughs> No, but I, I said it seemed like 18 hours. It may not have been 18 hours, but it seemed like 18 hours. Well, do we? Do you want to listen to it? No, I don't want to listen to it again. Do you need to listen to it again? Do you remember hearing yourself say it was about 18 hours or seemed like 18 hours? Or you said it was like 18 hours? It was like 18 hours. Right. You didn't say half an hour, right? No, I, does that sound like 18 hours? You didn't say an hour and a half, right? Yeah, you're right. You didn't say half the night. Right? Yeah, you're right. You said 18 hours. Well, maybe that's how long I've been up. You didn't say you'd been up for 18 hours. You said you'd been with him for 18 hours, right? Well, shit. <laughs> and then when you initially talked to the officers about this case, mm -hmm. You told them you stole an SD card. Yeah. And that was not true. Oh, you did steal the SD card. You said you stole it from him, Mr. Smith. Oh, no. You did not tell the officers you stole an SD card from Mr. Smith. Yeah, I probably did. Yeah, I did. I lied at first. We've already gone over that. Mm -hmm. And they interviewed you. They did an entire interview with you where you persisted in saying you'd stolen the SD card from Mr. Smith, right? It on the side of the road too and you made up why because you would have picked it up what and you made up a reason for having picked it up right yeah okay all right um so obviously you, you're aware of what i want to talk to you about so if you just kind of describe how you how you came to, to get a hold of this little card and what well, you saw and usually when i'm stoned if i've been smoking weed i look on the ground because there's always a lot of broken phones on the ground and i last time i found an sd card on the ground over there by cars it had 325 songs on it mm -hmm. so i'm like Cool, I scored. I found another SD card. Maybe there's music on it. Mm -hmm. There ain't no music on that card. And all that was on there was the thing that said homicide. It said homicide? On the SD card. When you, yeah. When I put it in my phone to see if there was music on it, it just came up. It says homicide. homicide. All right. So <clears throat> walk back through that. You did not steal the SD card you gave to the police from Mr. Smith, right? No, I stole it from the store. Yeah, I no took the phone and I stole the SD card. And then I took the SD card, I put it in the phone. And then I took everything that was on that phone and put it on the SD card. Mm -hmm. But what you told the police, I know what I told the police. 2019, you <laughs> misled them about where yeah, you got I the did. card. You misled them as to where you found that SD card. Yeah, but was it lying? Was the and SD card lying? You misled them as to why you would have picked up the SD card off the ground. You said, I, the last one I found on 325 songs, I did. so I would have picked this one up too. That thought process never went through your head with regard to this SD card because you didn't find it on the ground, right? No. Are you clear on that one too? And they then wanted to know where you found the SD card. So they had you mark it on a map, right? Yeah. Like right here in this lot, right here, because okay. yeah. that's where I found the card. Okay. And and then, I'm going to make an X right there and then initial if you don't mind. Okay. And so it was just laying in the lot. Was there yeah. anything else around it? No, it was just laying down on the ground. Yeah. So they had you draw on the map where you found this SD. Yes, they sure and did. You were happy to do that in the moment. Uh, yeah. And that was completely untrue. Yeah. And then on October 2nd, they confronted you about that, right? They said, hey, we don't think. No, he, they called me up mm -hmm. and they said that they want me, that they want to come pick me up mm -hmm. and bring me back down to the office. And they said that they was going over it and something didn't add up about the SD card. And they said, um, I don't care if you got priors. 
I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care if you're doing drugs. We just need the real truth about how you came across it. And I told them. Well, you fought him a little bit, didn't you? What? You said you weren't lying. You swear to God, you're not lying. Is what you told them, right? Yeah, I probably did. Yeah, we won't go anywhere. We'll just chat a little bit and then we'll get out. I appreciate you calling back. And, uh, I know. So I've had a hangover for the Oh, no day. worries. I'm, I'm, I'll make it short and sweet so I don't hold it. It'll be your time too much. But um, I, 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 know you, I know you came and talked to me today. You were very cooperative. And I really, like I told you that day, I really appreciated that. And um, told me, I went back to my, to my unit and to my boss and told him everything. And the, the consensus was that we just had a really hard time. I mean, the, the SD card was so tiny to, to, to feel that that would have been found on the ground like that. And I just wanted to just kind of reiterate to you that if if you came up if you came up with that in some other way in any other way I don't care I mean obviously if it was if 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 it's any other way you found it I don't really care I just we need to know the truth because this is a obviously you saw what was on that SD card. Okay. Honest to God, I, I found it on the ground. Okay, and I just want to make sure because you saw what was on that SD yeah, card. Yeah, and, 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 it was and this dude and our, this dude's out rolling around. It's scary. We want to we want to make sure we that we get him and that we make sure that's that's stopping. Yeah. So that's why it's important that if there was any other detail about how you kid got that card. Uh, I found it on the ground. Okay. Yeah. Honest to God, okay. I'm not lying. Tyler, you have my word. I'm not lying. That. If you found it some other way, we're not worried about what you're involved in now as far as, I mean, we'd like to see you, you know, in a better place, you know. Yeah. But we're not worried about any theft, we're not worried about any prostitution, we're not worried about any of that. We're worried about somebody that might be killing women at high risk. I hear that, but I found that on the ground, honest to God. I found it on the ground. Because I find track phone SIM cards on the ground all the time, too. So there's no reason that a video camera covering that, that area not show you finding that. I don't know. I found it on the ground. Okay. So they did confront you. They did tell you they don't care about any of that. Yes, stuff. I told and you that. You did tell them. I swear to God, I'm not lying. Yeah. I got it on the ground. Yeah. And it was in fact a lie. Yes, it At was. At that point, you were but lying. Did, did, but but what was on it? Did it did, on the SD card? Was it a lie? I believe so. Not. And then. <clears throat> They asked you about how you came into the card. And again, this is that same conversation. They'd already told you they don't care about anything else, prostitution, theft, anything like that. Yeah. Okay. He said, where's that card at that? That's my work card is how he just... He said, I have my work on that card. Mr. Smith never said, I have my work on that card. That's my No, he card. said, I have my work on that phone is what he said. And in saying that it was the card, you were persisting in the lie. I know what I that was it persisting. Was the card. I was scared. Wouldn't you be scared too? Okay. When he went into the shell, did he leave the car running? Or the truck? Yeah. Okay. Is that when you found the card? Yeah. You took the card. Okay. Yeah. And what did you do with the card? I put it in my pocket. Okay. And when he came, there was no card, right? No, I guess you, it wasn't. And you did not put any card in your pocket. No, I put a phone in my pocket. And then you also testified here that you are the one who titled that card. Yeah, I titled um, that card. But that's not what you told the police. No, that's not what ago. I told the police. I lied to them about that too. Four years ago, you told the police that you put the card in the phone. It came up, it just said homicide, right? Mm hmm. There was no music on that card. And all that was on there was the thing that said homicide. It said homicide? On the SD card. When you, yeah. When I put it in my phone to see if there was music on it, it just came up. It says homicide. What was it that said homicide on it? The title. Oh, the title of it? Yeah. Okay. So you had been the one who put the files on the card and titled it that, right? I transferred what was on that phone onto that card, yeah. And then you retitled the card. No, I put a title on the card. And you gave it to the police, but you told them it was already titled back. I know what I told them. You know what they told them. Everybody here knows what I told them. Mm -hmm. And when you told that to the police, that was a lie. 
So it was a card lie. You also told the police, or you told the jury here today, that A, you knew. I knew both of the women. Right. And when you talked to. When you talked to the police when they served the subpoena last week, you recall that? Yeah. You told them that Mr. Smith, while he was with you on the night in question, admitted to killing Veronica. I don't remember that. Yeah, I probably did, but I don't remember that. Did he, 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 he admitted to killing Veronica? And I know I knew Veronica. So that was you talking to the police last week. Your Honor, I'm going to object this out of context. <coughs> he didn't admit. Mm -hmm. How is it out of context? He admitted to killing Veronica, not to this witness. She didn't say he admitted to me that he killed me. Yeah, I didn't okay. say that. Okay, so he never admitted to you that he, okay. he never said anything about that to you? No. Okay. <coughs> Why are you trying to put words in my mouth? And then you said... Me and that one girl got out of jail on the same day. And which which girl were you referring to? Catherine Joe Henry. Okay. And you're saying that you and she got there, out. Of we drank a bottle of vodka, and she said that she had to go meet somebody, and that she'd probably see me later that night. Now, and I want to back up because you got to let me finish my question. <laughs> I want to clarify when it was you remember having gotten out of jail with her. It was it was the third. September third, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Uh which jail had you been at with her? Highland. How long had you been there? Um let's see, I think six months had six months to four months. Okay, so you did a four month sentence on what? Um, spraying my boyfriend with bear pepper spray. And your release date, you recall, was September 3rd, 2019. Um, somewhere around there, yeah. And that was the same day Kathleen Henry was released. I'm pretty sure it was close around that area. I had problems with my memory, but. Uh, and you're saying now you were with her that morning. Yeah. And you had a bottle of vodka together. Yeah, everybody drink out there. And she said she had to go meet a friend. Yes, she did. So your testimony is that you saw her on the day. The last time I seen her was on September 3rd. Okay. And she said something about going to get a phone and, and all that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I didn't put that in. Mm -hmm. But when you talked to the police four years ago, now, you talked to the police after you viewed the videos, right? Huh? You talked to the police after you viewed the pictures and the videos? Um, after, yeah. And <laughs> you looked at most of them, all of them? I watched the whole thing. You look at the pictures? Yeah. And enough that you were able to you know, recount here what you saw, right? Like what? Um, she's all beat up, um, barely breathing, her face all swollen, black and blue, legs spread eagle. He's sticking his fingers up inside of her, talking near, nasty to her, threatening her, you know? So, right. And she was, you know, admittedly, um, what you viewed on the video, somebody who was beat up, you know, swollen, right? No, you don't see everybody like that. Uh, no. But that's what you beat on the video. That was the state of the person you saw on the video. Yeah, she looked like she was close to death. She looked pretty fucked up. Like, and you didn't recognize her in the video? No. And in fact, you, you asked the police, hey, if you figure out who this is, let me know, right? And then when they showed me what she looked like without being all beat up, mm -hmm. then I recognized her. And when was that? 
I don't know. Which officer showed you the picture? Um, I think it was when I was with Mr. Lee. I don't remember. I uh, saying there was an interview during which an officer showed you a picture of Kathleen Henry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You also told the police, well, you told the jury here today that you knew that it was the Marriott Hotel because of a screenshot, right? Yes. When you talked to the police, though, you told them you recognized it from the carpet. Do you recall that? The carpet? Of the hotel. Um, probably, yeah. Carpet, bed spreads, they all look the same. Yeah, because the carpet there, because she was laying on the carpet. Mm -hmm. And the hotel, did you recognize which hotel it might be? I think in Marriott. Marriott, okay. Because the, I've been to the Marriott before, mm -hmm. and the, the, the carpet, pattern of the carpet is similar. Mm -hmm. Could it help identify? Um... Other than the hotel, you thought maybe it was the Marriott. Yeah, it's just the hotel. Okay. This is what really stood out. Okay. Because like in the, in one of the it's a hotel because the carpet in the video and the pictures, right? Mm hmm You did not mention the screenshot. Well, maybe I didn't remember the carpet at the time. Because that stood out. Wi-Fi hook up Wi-Fi. And your testimony here today is you transferred from this phone you'd stolen from a truck onto an SD card you'd stolen from Fred Meyer, all of the files. There was nothing else on that phone, but from September 3rd, from the time they he picked her up September 3rd to September 5th, and it was three days worth of recordings, the, the pictures, other than that, there was nothing. I said, mm -hmm. yes, shit. And one video. Three days were shipped and mm -hmm. in the woods. <laughs> so I have judge. Pretty sure for that. It won't take a second. Um, the shell station that he took you to uh -huh. where he tried to get money. Is that the one at 15th and Ingra? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And where he originally picked you up, was that at the Cars on Gamble? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, behind cars, like behind where that parking lot is. Mm -hmm. And then there's that white building and then that big parking lot there is where he picked me up. And is that where you told the police originally that you found the SD yeah. card? Okay. Yeah. So the spot that you told them that you found the SD card is the place that he picked you up from? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you marked that on the map, that's where he where he picked you up? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the defense played a portion of your audio where you can hear two detectives. One is Detective Lee. Another is Detective Jade Baker telling you basically they don't care about theft. Yeah. They don't care about prostitution. Was it in that interview that you told them that the you, truth? Well, that you told them that you stole the SD card from Mr. Smith. Um, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So that was early on, all the way back in October of 2019. Within within days, you told them that you had stolen the SD card, not that you found it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I want to ask you about phones. For folks who are homeless, are phones a commodity, meaning something that you can trade or something that you... Um, yeah, they do. And the same with SD cards? Um, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, alcohol? Is alcohol something you can trade or use? Oh, you can trade anything. Okay. Um, <laughs> You trade somebody else's car. 
you were asked about whether or not the officers ever showed you a photo of Kathleen Joe Henry. Do you know if they did, or did you possibly see that on the news somewhere? Um, I really can't remember. Honestly. And, and when you met with Officer Emerson at the very, very beginning at um, your doctor's office, mm -hmm. um, do you recall telling him that the woman was beat up so badly that you couldn't recognize her? Yeah, he, I think he's the one that showed me the, uh, showed me what um, what what she looked like. I maybe maybe, but you don't remember. I can't really remember. What's really important, um, Valerie, is I don't want you to guess. Do you recall telling Officer Emerson? that I could probably recognize her, but she's so beat up, I just can't. Yeah. I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about timing. How reliable do you think your sense of time is from four years ago? What do you mean? Like when you talk about something being hours or days, when you're using, does that affect how you perceive time? Oh, yeah. I think you said yesterday, sometimes when you use, you'll be up for three days. Yeah. Okay. Do you always recognize that as three days or sometimes does it feel like one day between sleeps? Sometimes, yeah, it can feel like one day. Okay. And I want to talk to you a little bit about going to see Dr. Thornquist. Before you went and saw Dr. Thornquist, had you already transferred that information to the SD card? Um, I think so. Okay. If the police took the SD card from you at Dr. Thornquist's office, it would make sense that that had already happened, right? Yeah. Okay. And I want to ask you about the time it took from the time that you stole the phone until you went to see Dr. Thornquist? I think it was um, a couple days, okay. give or take. Okay. Do you remember a phone call with Detective Lee where you told him it was probably about a week? Yeah, it could have been. A couple days, yeah, give or take. Do you or... think your memory about time would be more reliable when you talk to Detective Lee or more reliable now? I don't understand. When you were telling Detective Lee that it was you had the card about a week before you went to, or that you had the the images, the phone yeah. about a week before you went to see Dr. Thornquist, were you being honest with him about that? Yes, ma'am. And I want to ask you about those images. Regardless of how you came into possession of the phone. Did you alter the images at all? No, I don't know how to do that. I wouldn't do that. Okay. Did you alter the video at all? Uh -uh. I don't know how to do that either, but I wouldn't do that. Why, what, what, what would be the cause? Did you do your best to copy it all over? No, I just put it all on the SD card. And the only one is the one the cops got. Okay. Did you intentionally delete or change anything? No, 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 ma'am. Okay, so you did do your best to copy it all over. Yeah, yeah, I got all of it. And um, those images that you saw, timing and all of that aside, have those stayed with you? In my head? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. That means you're done, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. They called um, Officer Jack Emerson. So remain standing and raise your right hand and we'll swear you. Do you solemnly, <clears throat> do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony? Testimony you will give in the case I'm for the support. It'll be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed and please state your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Jack Emerson. Last name is E M M E R S O N. 
I'm sorry, Judge, can I just have one moment? Yes, you may. Thank you. Master Clerk, could you turn on the TV for me? Please, thank you. Yeah. Emerson, where do you work? I work for the Anchorage Police Department. And how long have you worked there? Uh, since December of 2016. And can you describe some of the training experience you received to become an officer? Uh, well, at the beginning in 2016, I attended an academy that was approximately six months in length, where I learned basic police investigation to include interviews, um, evidence collection, how to deal with conflict and uh, shooting and defensive tactics. And then after that six month academy, I went on to a four and a half month field training officer program where I applied those skills that I had learned in the field as a police officer. And where do you currently, what is your current role at APD? My current role is as a swing shift patrol officer. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? I'm working uh, and taking calls for service from dispatch or responding to um, other incidents around the city during the hours of 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. I wanna take you back to 2019. Um, were you working um, as a patrol officer back in 2019? Yes, I was, and it's the same shift as I'm working now. And I want to take you back specifically to September 20, excuse me, September 30, 2019. Were you dispatched to a Dr. Thornquist's office? Yes, I was. And what was the nature of the dispatch as you understood it? The nature of the dispatch as I understood it was a female had arrived and reported that she had obtained a SD card containing um, images that may have reflected a homicide. Um, when I responded, um, I arrived and contacted a Valerie Kassler, uh, who I identified by name and date of birth, and who I had met previously before in the Fairview area. Um, and I collected an SD card, which I then viewed. When you initially met with Ms. Kassler, um, what was the information she provided you about where she had found the SD card? The information that Ms. Kassler provided me was that she was in the Fairview area, specifically in the area of the cars on Gamble, which is at 13th and Gamble, um, where she recovered an SD card from the ground. And did uh, you view the images at the doctor's office with Ms. Kassler? Yes, I did. And um, how did you view those images? I used her phone to view those images. And did you review at that time all the images that were on the phone? I don't believe, or at least I don't recall viewing all the images. I reviewed enough images to make a determination to call my supervisor. Okay. And um, based on your review of the images, you said you called your supervisor. What happened at that point? Uh, and then we contacted the homicide unit, and then I took the SD card to our cyber crimes unit, where I met with um, the technicians there and Detective Lee. Okay. So um, you said you viewed the images on her phone, and then it's and then you did not take her phone, correct? No, I did not take okay. her phone. You took, what did you take from Ms. I Kessler? took the SD card okay. from Ms. Kessler. What did you do with Ms. Kessler at that point? I transported her to detectives for an interview. Did you uh, take photos of the phone um, and the images as you were looking that are on some of the images as you were looking them on Ms. Kessler's phone? Yes, I did. Okay. The first thing I want to do though is I want to show you been marked as uh, states exhibits 26. And then I'm also going to show you what's marked as states exhibits 37, 38, and 39. Did may approach the witness? Yes. Okay. 
That's 26 and this is 37, 38 and 39. Let's talk first about exhibit number 26. Do you, and that's in the package there. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And what is that? This is a micro SD card. Okay. Is that the SD card that you received from Ms. Kasler? Yes, it is. Okay. And you said you delivered it to do um, the Anchorage Police Department specifically. Did, did you say Mr. Hunter? No, I said the cyber crimes. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember who you, in particular, if you dropped it off or gave it to one particular person, cyber crimes? I didn't catch his name. I'm not very great with names, okay. um, but I believe it was Technician Hunter. Okay. And um, <clears throat> at this time, I'd like to move to admit exhibit number 26. Is there objection? Uh, yes, yes, you can. No. Okay. Thank and then you. I'd like to turn to exhibits 37, 38, and 39. Do you recognize uh, those photos? Yes, I do. Okay. And just generally, what are those? Pictures of these are pictures of Miss Castler's phone with the S. Uh, this is a picture of the phone with the tab SD card pulled up and on there reflects um, what was displayed on the phone at the time. Are those pictures a true and accurate representation of your investigation and contact with Miss Castler on September 30 of 2019? Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, Judge, I would move to uh, admit and publish 37, 38, and 39. Is there objection? Um, 39, Judge, we approach. Yes. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, and 39 are admitted, and you may publish. Yeah, Officer Simpson, there's a TV behind you. Um, can you describe to the jury what, office, what exhibit 37 is? Uh, 37 is the picture of the phone, as we're looking at it with the tab up there. So SD card is selected on the SD card are those different files. And um, let's then move to exhibit number 38. 38. Oh, no, go ahead. 38 is a zoomed in photo of this specific file, Homicide Marriott Hotel. And um, last number, exhibit number 39, can you describe what we're looking at here? 39 is once the file folder for Homicide Marriott Hotel was opened is the um, screen that was displaying these photographs and images. And is this just one particular shot of just the initial screen when you click on that folder? Yes. So, um, Mr. M uh, Officer Emson, you said you were familiar with Ms. Kasler from, um, I think, the area, the Fairview area. Yes. Can you kind of describe your previous interactions with her? Uh, previous interactions with her? Um, we had some disturbances in the areas of the Fairview area for a long time, um, and I've just had her, like, have witnessed her and talked to her in passing contact for different things, no, no crim nothing criminal in nature or anything like that. How would you describe her demeanor when you met with her at Dr. Thornquist's office? Um, when I spoke with Ms. Kassler at Mr. Thornquist's office, uh, she appeared to be uh, shaken, like just kind of an anxious, I would say. Um, and when she talked to me, she was just kind of worried. And I believe it was because she had possession of something uh, that was very concerning. Do you recall um, uh, when you were dispatched, if uh, who made the phone call to that that resulted in your initial dis dispatch to Dr. Thornquist's office? No, I don't. If you. Do you recall if Ms. Kasler, when she was talking to you about the images that um, initially um, 
when you responded and she was talking about the images that were on the SD card, if she discussed whether or not with, if she said she didn't, couldn't recognize the woman on the SD card because she was so beaten up in black and blue. That is correct. Um, I did listen to my audio recorded interview with her uh, this morning and she did say that she couldn't recognize the person on the images and that they had severe injury. At, um, when you listened to your audio this morning, did she have any concerns um, when she was describing the person on uh, the images that it might be someone she know, knew? No. Or recognize anyone, did not, did or didn't recognize who that person was? Correct. I specifically asked her if she recognized these individuals and she said she did not. Okay, if those are all the questions I have for you, Officer Emerson, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, officer. Good morning. Um, so you responded to Dr. Thornquist's office after the call came in that there was something to respond to there, right? Yes. Um, and when you got there, you spoke to Dr. Thornquist and Ms. Kessler? Yes. And there was already this SD card, right? Correct. And that's what was going to be turned over to you? Yes. You have no personal knowledge as to where that SD card had been even an hour before you got there. No. Never mind a day before you got there. Correct. Uh, when you got there, Ms. Kastler had a single phone on her, right? Yes. And if we looked at, I'm not going to publish it right now, but uh, exhibit 37, the picture of the black phone, you took a picture of that was the phone she had on her. Correct. So she was in possession of that phone when you spoke to her. Yes. She was not in possession of a second phone. Not that I'm aware of. When you initially spoke to her, she did not tell you that this SD card was a copy of pictures and videos from a separate phone. No. Right. And had she told you that, presumably your next question would have been, where is that phone, right? Correct. And you would have asked her to either produce it or tell you where you could find it. Yep. It was also given to you already titled Homicide Anchorage Marriott Hotel Midtown. Yeah. She did not tell you that she's the one who gave it that title, right? Right. She implied, in fact, that she found it with that title on. Yes. When you looked at the photos, did you happen to notice if there were any screenshots? Uh, it wouldn't show like the Anchorage Marriott Wi-Fi or anything like that. No, I don't recall that. You don't remember seeing anything like that on it? No. Did you go through all the files that were on the, not, sorry, I'm going to rephrase that a little bit. Not asking if you looked at every single one of the files, but did you scan how many files were on the card when you initially viewed it? Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't believe I went over every single file or scanned all the files. I just mostly focused on what was like, what I was given. Okay. So when you got there, you were simply shown on Ms. Kassler's phone, which she was in possession of. Hmm files on an SD card and you seize the SD card and interview her. Yes. All right. Thank you. Officer Emerson, um, you said you didn't look at necessarily every single one, but you did look at some of the photos. Yes, I did. Recall. Do you recall if you also looked at any videos? Yes, I did. What was your initial impression of what you did see? An objective relevance. Be honest, I'll cross as well. What is the relevance? The relevance, Judge, is he is um, asked to um, he's asked if he's looked at them. I want to talk about in, and that does actually was in the cross that what he didn't didn't do with this regards to the images, and it also goes to a state of mind as to what he did with the investigation. Overall, okay. So when I viewed the videos, um, this is the first time I'd ever responded to an incident like this where I was collecting evidence of a homicide. And um, in the videos, it depicted a male. Um, Object, Judge. Yeah, sorry. Going into the contents rather sorry. than what he did. I think we're going to be on the scope across here. The objection is non-responsive. It's sustained. So what was your impression of, the, of what you did, the content that you did you? What, is your, what was your general impression? My impression was that this is a very serious matter and that our homicide unit needed to be informed. Thank you. Yeah. You're done, officer. All right. Thank you. 
going to untangle. Yeah. And Loafman is L O U G H M A N. You're ready. Go. Detective, can you introduce yourself to the jury and let them know what you do for a living? Good morning. Uh, my name is Tiffany Loafman. I'm a detective with Anchorage Police Department. I'm currently in financial crimes, um, but I have worked in various units at APD, and I was also a police officer and detective out of state before that. And when did you hire on with the APD? The APD 2005, okay. but I started, my very first academy was fall of 93. Okay, and what, what state was that in? That was Colorado. Okay, so fall of 93, are you pushing 30 years here in law enforcement? Pushing, yeah, 30 years. Okay, um, so mo is it fair to say most of your time has been in financial crimes? Correct. Okay. Financial crimes, Eagle River, burglary, homicide. Okay. And um, were you in the homicide unit in October and September of 2019? I was. Okay. And at that point, um, when a case would come into the homicide unit, how was it handled? Um, so a case would come in and we would all meet together, the homicide unit, all the detectives would meet and then be briefed on things um, and then go from there and assignments would be handed out. Okay. Is there typically a case officer assigned? There is. Okay. And for the case that we're here for today, Mr. Smith, who was that case officer? Uh, Detective Lee. Okay. And um, did you have a number of assignments with regard to this case? I did. Okay. When you all got the very first briefing, what's the first thing you saw or heard about the case um, without getting into terrible specifics, but how did it come to the APD? Um, well, it came to Detective Lee and then he brought it to the homicide unit. Um, and it was a video okay. and some photographs. And based on what you observed on the video and photographs, were you tasked with doing some, I guess, some detective work in town? It was. Tell the jury about that. What did you do? Um, so Detective Lee had gotten this information the previous, I believe it was previous day, and had shared it with us. And so um, one of the things that he had gotten was um, some information that this may have occurred at Town Place. Town Place Suites um, in Midtown. And so another detective and I went to this hotel to try to see what other information we could get. If we could get any um, surveillance video or just whatever they might have that we could get. Okay. And what detective did you go with? Detective Roberts, Christina Roberts. Okay. And when you go to the Town Place Suites Marriott, who do you contact? Uh, Lisa Michelson. Okay. Were you just in the hallway with her? Yes. Okay. And did Ms. Michelson provide you some information about um, Brian Smith? Um, she did. Okay. Um, specifically, did she provide you records of his? Uh, I don't think she gave me records. I think Detective Lee had already gotten those records, but um, she did confirm some some things that Detective Lee had been given. Okay. And um, we tried to get the video surveillance from her. She was having difficulty getting into that. So um, you weren't able to get the video surveillance right then and there. What did you all do? Right. So I let her try to get it through her regular channel of IT people um, to try to get in. And then she wasn't able to get in. So I believe it was the next day. I actually took one of our cyber crimes um, personnel, Brandon Hunter, Brandon Hunter, um, over there. And he took the whole, he wasn't able to get in either. So he took the whole machine. Okay. And did Ms. Michelson also give you all access to room 323? Um, there were guests staying in 323 at that time. So she had the guests removed from that. And then I notified our crime scene folks. And eventually, I believe she had given them permission to get in. Okay. Did you kind of coordinate that or help kind of the liaison for that? Correct. At the time, did you also re like look at the carpet in the hotel? I did. She let me into um, a another room and said that all the rooms were carpeted the same. Um, and so I did go into another room and observe the carpet in that room. Okay. And what was significant about that observation? Um, it appeared to be the same carpet as the same like pattern and colors as the, the carpet in the video. Did the room appear to have the same layout? Um, that I don't know. I just, you know, it's mostly focused on the carpet. Did you do any other work to try and obtain surveillance video in or around the Marriott? I did. 
Okay, tell the jury about that. Um, so Christina, Detective Roberts and I went um, in Canvas the area and by Canvas, we just, we walk around, we drive around, we look for cameras that might be on other buildings. Um, the Metro Mall sits kind of across the street from the hotel. So we met with the owner of um, the Metro Mall, Mr. Shimmick, and asked him if he had any surveillance video, which he, which he didn't. Um, a lot of times cameras overwrite after a certain period of time, and that was the case. Were you able to find any surrounding businesses that had um, cameras that were inside of a month old? No, or no video. That no was video. correct. Okay. Were you at some point tasked with going to a shell station at 15th and Ingra? I did. Okay. And what did you go to the shell station at 15th and Ingra for? Um, I believe Detective Lee had gotten information that said um, there was possibly an ATM that had been used by Mr. Smith. So I was asked to go see if that um, that ATM had a camera. I ended up calling the, the individual that was in charge of those and found out that that was told that that ATM did not have an internal video. And I passed that on okay. to Mr. or Detective Lee. So you weren't able to get video? Correct. Okay. If any receipts were collected, would that have been you or somebody else? That would have been somebody else. Okay. And um, I want to talk to you about... Um, after kind of this canvas and liaison with the Marriott Hotel, were you tasked with an out-of-state trip? Yes. How did that come about? Um, so I believe it was the that Saturday. I don't know the exact date. Um, we had a unit meeting, detective unit meeting, homicide unit meeting, and um, Detective Cordy and I were tasked with going to Washington, D.C. Um, because... Uh, it had been discovered that Mr. Smith was on vacation in the Washington, D.C. area with his wife. Um, do you know when they left or how long they were there? I do not. Okay. Do you know when he was scheduled to return? He was scheduled to return. I believe it was the 8th. Okay. And so what do you and Detective Cordy do? So Detective and Cordy and I fly down. Um, we meet with some FBI agents um, and some local police detectives um, and just kind of come up with a plan. The idea was to have, um, we had learned that Mr. Smith had planned on flying back to Alaska. We felt like that was the best um, for detectives so they could cooperate anything that he said and have access to um, all our computer systems here. Um, and it was also related to us that Mrs. Smith was going to stay Mrs. Bislin was going to stay in the Washington, D.C. area. So we were down there just in case, a um, couple of reasons in case he didn't get on the plane um, so that we would end up interviewing Mr. Smith there. And then uh, the plan was also for me to interview his wife or for Detective Court and I interview his wife. And you said you met with some FBI agents. Had they been surveilling Mr. Smith prior to your arrival and, and after your arrival? Yes. Okay. And um, so the police were generally aware of where he was moving in and about the DC area. Yes. Okay. And um, did you, once he got on the plane, did you have occasion to have an interview with Ms. Bisland? Yes. Okay. Was that coordinated so that interview would happen while he was on the plane or something else? It was, it was so that once Mr. Smith left, that we would interview her. Okay. Those things separate. Correct. Okay. And um, when you interviewed Miss Bisland, where did y'all contact her? Um, she was eating dinner at a restaurant. We um, we allowed her to finish her meal, and then we waited till she came outside of the restaurant. Okay. So you contact her basically in a parking lot outside of a restaurant. Correct. Where did you go to have your conversation with her? Um, the police, I think it's Fairfax County uh, Police in the Washington, D.C. area had a substation um, across the street from where this restaurant was. It was super close and convenient. And how would you describe, well, first of all, how old is Ms. Bisland? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how old she is now. Okay. Um, would it refresh your recollection to look at your report? Yes. <laughs> is somebody's biographical information something you would put on a report? Yes. Okay. I'm going to refer you to Supplement 69. If you don't have a copy of it, I can bring it up. 69. I do that. 
Do you uh, have that? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, what's her date of birth? Uh, seven, nine of 50. Okay, so at the time you were interviewing her, she was 69 years old? Correct. Okay, and um, how would you describe her physically? Um, physically, she, I think she's in great shape for 69. Um, she, her speech, she had told me she'd had some difficulty with her speech and she believed she'd had a, had a stroke. Um, she was not easy. She was easily distracted, I guess, when you spoke to her. It was difficult to kind of stay on task. Did she seem at first concerned to be talking to you all? No. Okay. Did she seem to understand why you were there? No. When you told her why you were there, um, what was her, without telling the jury what she said, what was her general reaction? Um, not shocked. She had some concerns about what was going on back here. She, was she worried about her house in Anchorage? Yes. Okay. She was worried about her cat. Her cats. Did you promise her you would make arrangements for the cats? Yes. Okay. And, um, or single cat, right? I, and I don't recall if it was a cat or cats, but... Um, yeah, I, I get that, like being concerned about your pets. Did she at that point have any information that was particularly helpful about the case? Did she have any idea what what Mr. Smith was being accused of? Um, initially, she did not. We at one point we told her like it was about a homicide. Um, was her general reaction disbelief? Um, no, I don't, I don't know that it actually sank in. She, she was not shocked okay. or surprised. I, you know, I was very, I was kind of surprised that she wasn't surprised that two detectives from Anchorage were in Washington, D.C. speaking with her. Was she cooperative with you all? Yes. Did she allow you to download her phone? Yes. Okay. And even after you returned to Anchorage, did you have um, continued contact with Ms. Bisland? Yes. Um, at one point, did you go to her house to collect some electronic devices? Yes. Tell the jury about that. Um, so apparently she had done it. I didn't see it, but she'd done an interview with one of the local um, TV stations and had said something to the effect of, you know, the police came and searched my house, and <clears throat> but they, they didn't take these and held up. Like I said, I didn't see the video <clears throat> or the interview. Um, and so there was some concern that did crime scene team miss something or were there other videos that they weren't able to be, you know, that weren't found. Um, so we went over there and she provided those, which turned out not to be USB drives. I gave those over to her. Okay. She provided you some things that looked electronic in nature, but weren't actually storage devices. Correct. Okay. Correct. And had the APB's team already reviewed those things? Yes. Okay but she was cooperative in that regard. Absolutely. Okay. Did you um, seek her permission to search um, some property outside of Anchorage? Yes. Okay. Um, was that property owned by Ms. Bisland? Yes. Where was it at? Uh, Talkeetna. And did she give consent for a, a search of that property? She did. Okay. And at some point, did you go and um, ask her for a blanket? Yes. Okay. What prompted that? Um, I believe that was the information that Detective Lee had gotten somehow. Okay. Um, did you ever view a video where that blanket was um, present? I don't think so. Okay. You were asked by Detective Lee to go find it? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit 45. What is States Exhibit 45? Um, it is a blanket. And is that blanket with this one? Sorry. How do you know that? Um, so there's a property tag. It's in it's in the package and it's sealed with evidence tape. And there's a property tag number on there. This is property tag number 1227799. Um, and it says blanket. It has a case number. Um, and it has my name, my club DSN, which is my employee number. Um, and it 
is um, that APD is basically protocol that you, when you log something into evidence, you put your employee number, you put your name, you document what the item is and what the case number is? Yes. Honestly. Now, is that how you originally packaged it? Uh, no. Okay. And so is the brown paper packaging your packaging? Uh, it is difficult to tell. Well, the you can open that all the way up. The stickers on the brown paper, right? Yes. And you put that there. Yes. Okay. Why do you normally package things in brown paper? Um, if there's any kind of um, liquid, you don't want to put it in plastic because it can mold and cause all sorts of problems. Okay, so, so it's less protocol to package it in paper. Correct. Could the jury see it if it was in paper? No. So <laughs> do detectives often repackage things for trial? Yes. Um, can you tell that that was repackaged um, by Detective Patternose for this trial? Um, it was repackaged. I don't know her DSN, her number. Um, that's what it appears to be. Does she have a signature on Yeah, it, her initials are on here, M P. Okay. Um, so it's been repackaged by somebody currently in the homicide unit so that the jury can, can see it. Got it. But other than that, are you confident that that's the blanket that you took from Ms. Bisland? Other than that, yes. Okay. I'd move at this point for the admission of States Exhibit 45. Submitted. I think that that's all I have for you, Detective. I just want to double check. Um, I want to be clear, you weren't part of the search team out at Talkeetna, is that right? Correct. Okay. I was not. Did you kind of become the liaison between the Anchorage Police Department and Ms. Bistland? Yes. Did you develop a rapport with her while you were in D.C.? Yes. Okay. I thought so. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have for you. No cross. Say no cross? No cross. Okay, you're done. Thank you. Thank detective. you. Okay, so we need to set some things up in the courtroom for that. Yes. How long do you think it'll take? Master Clerk. Uh, how long will he? He'll be on the stand the rest of the day. I don't no, know. I, I meant how long break should we take? Well, let's take 20. Jen you know, up to and including the seizing of the videos and playing of the videos, that obviously spurned a whole lot more investigation that foundation has to be laid for. So it was our best idea to call him now and then call him again at the end. So it'll be a limited objection to that process. Um, is the intent to uh, is the intent to play the videos that were seized from the SD card today? Yes. yes. Um, I don't think that there's been a sufficient foundation laid for those yet, Judge. Be, be seated then. Sorry. So detective. <laughs> Hunter is out of state. He will be testifying on Monday. I think you can admit them conditions to his um, condition upon conditional relevance upon his testimony later. He'll be testimony. He'll be testifying that he took the SD card and copied it. And, and yeah, I'm sorry, APD Tech Hunter, that he's the one that copied the SD card and gave it to Detective Lee. And that testimony will come on Monday. Well, Judge, I mean, I think the issues are greater than that. Um, you know, we had testimony, I mean, again, and I'll let Your Honor weigh it from uh, Ms. Kassler this morning and yesterday as to how she came into possession of the SD card. I um, mean, what she said is she had a phone she looked at it there were 46 video 46 pictures and one video on it which is not what the sd card showed when the police took possession of it um i think her credibility is basically nil at this point i mean her story changed frequently even while she was on the stand today so her credibility as a witness is very questionable what we know now is that we don't have access to the originals of the videos that she stole 
because she somehow got rid of the phone. And I understand she said that she was walking through the woods and tripped and lost it. That's clearly not what happened um, because her testimony was that that happened after she talked to Dr. Thornquist. When the officers got to Dr. Thornquist, uh, she already had the SD card for them. So her timeline isn't the same. She also said she lost both of her phones when she tripped and fell. When the detectives got to Dr. Thornquist, she clearly still had her own phone and she'd only lost the one. So her, even her story as to how she lost the originals doesn't hold up to scrutiny and doesn't have any credibility. Similarly, nobody's yet testified that that is in fact Kathleen Henry on the videos and no, nobody's provided that evidence. And even Ms. Kastler, as hard as she tried to give evidence in this case that she thought might be helpful to the state, even she said she couldn't recognize Kathleen Henry on the video. So I don't know how the state can argue or show that the videos are relevant yet when there is literally no foundation they get. We don't have originals. We don't know how these copies compare to the originals. We can't even really say that they're duplicates. Seems to be in a different format than what she says she copied. And we don't even have a basic relevance as to Mr. Smith is charged with the murder of Kathleen Henry. Supposedly the state wants the jury to think that's Kathleen Henry on the video. Nobody's yet provided that testimony. Go ahead. The testimony regarding Kathleen Henry is going to come in part through the video where the uh, and in part through the defendant's interrogation where he admits to finding that body in his truck and dumping it on the Seward Highway where Miss Henry was found. Um, you know, we'll have the medical examiner and all of that. So we're just not there yet. But that doesn't mean that the video doesn't get played. Um, any credibility issues regarding Ms. Kassler go to weight, not admissibility. She testified inconsistent about some timelines for sure, but she's absolutely consistent that she got those images from the defendant, whether they were on SD card or on a phone, and she copied them from the phone onto the SD card. She believed she copied them all and, and gave them to the police. She, she was absolutely consistent about that. How many they are, I mean, if you, it depends on how you wanna look at it um, and whether she's credible about numbers, it doesn't, really doesn't matter. I think that that goes to weight, not admissibility. When I, do you have a re reply? Uh, briefly, Judge, which is I, I would ask the court to be very cautious in how it applies the doctrine of conditional relevance or conditional admissibility, especially with regard to this evidence. Um, I mean, even the state during its war gear said, you know, these images are so graphic, you can't unsee them. I mean, the state's questionably admissible theory theme during opening of the burden of knowing um you know all agrees that once you see these videos you can't unsee them so the idea that it would, we would conditionally admit evidence that is this questionable um i think would violate i mean at least evidence rule 403 it is not a bell that can be unrung it's not something the jury can hear and then be told to ignore if they actually don't prove up the foundation you know and i'll add and again we haven't gotten there to this point in the testimony yet um there's no proof that, you know, Kathleen Henry was ever in that room either. I mean, there's no DNA to back it up. We heard that you know, we heard the testimony already today that they seized carpet. Her DNA wasn't found on it. Um, so the purpose of this trial is not to emit any evidence that they might have that they want to show that Mr. Smith committed a crime. It is to show that the state's burden, sorry, that the purpose here is the state has the burden beyond a reasonable doubt to show that he killed specific people. And there's been nothing yet to show that that is Kathleen Henry on the video. Um, and I'll add, well, there's other circumstantial evidence to show that it may not be, but, um, you know, including there's a, a bone that you would expect to be broken in somebody who was strangled. They're claiming, you know, violent strangulation, that bone was not broken here. Um, I just don't think those videos can be admitted yet without all of the evidence bearing on their admissibility to be presented in court before the jury. Okay. Uh, I tend to agree. I think that an additional, I, I think that 
using conditional relevance or, or conditional admission in this situation would be ill-advised. I'm gonna allow the state to lay the foundation they need to lay before, or I'm gonna require them to lay the foundation they need to lay before the videos are played. Your Honor, the only foundation that the state, others foundation that the state was gonna lay was to call Tech Hunter and say, I took That's that. That's what I'm referring to. Okay, we don't have to put on the autopsy, the medical examiner, Kathleen Henry's body. I think that people could view the videos and make identifications based on the videos. I think they can as well, which makes them self-authenticating to some degree. And, and I think that information, I viewed the videos for the record. I think that information on the videos including information provided by Mr. Smith can be used to aid in identification. That isn't the reason I'm I'm making the ruling I am. The reason I'm making the ruling I am is that there needs to be, I, I think it needs the chain of custody and the the way the videos appear now. Um, the in, for information about whether they for, for the jury to conclude about whether there's been any additions, subtractions, alterations, et cetera, um, should be part of the foundation that's laid here. Can I make an offer of proof? Um, I, I would be very glad to hear an offer of proof, yes. Okay, so Detective Hunter, or Tech Hunter, I expect to testify on Monday. Um, he will testify that the SD card that's been admitted states exhibit 26 is what he copied and gave to Detective Lee. And that's what's going to be on state's exhibits that we were going to play here today. Um, and that he will say that no alterations have been made from him by the or from anybody at APD from the time it got from Valerie Kassler to Detective Lee. The other thing that he will say is that he can tell that the SD card, that the images were put onto the SD card or appear to be put onto the SD card on September 24th, 2019, um, which is consistent with Ms. Kassler's statement to the police that she, she told them early on and admitted today was that she had the card about a week before she gave it to, before she um, went to her doctor. She's at the doctor on the 29th, gives it, gives it over on the 29th. So about five days between the time the um, those videos are copied onto that card and the time that the police get them. So I expect that um, Tech Hunter is going to corroborate that timeline. Um, and say that the videos hadn't been altered at all from the time that he received them from Ms. Kassler until, until they went to Detective Lee. Yeah. That's, uh, assume, I have no reason to think he won't testify. Assuming that information comes in, I would, uh, and, and no contrary evidence is presented or, or no no, nothing is, uh, well, assuming it comes in the way you've described, I think I would be inclined to admit the videos. Right, and I'm reading But your we're, in, we're, in an, we're in an area of the law that is new. And uh, the court's been looking for case law from other jurisdictions because there isn't any in Alaska on point. And I think it is important in this case to get all the ducks lined up before the video is played. So I, if the testimony comes in as you just described it, I think it would be admissible, but it's not in yet. I'm also looking at the court's ruling on the motion in limine and that. Um... I'm prepared to go through that. Some of the underlying basis for which I on which I ruled has now been called into question. Sure. Uh, so and it, it is 
the defense is renewing their objection uh, with slightly different arguments that, at this point that I will need to address. And uh, I would, it would be a, a better course to address those arguments once all the evident, foundational evidence is in the record. I want to be clear that the state believes much of the foundational evidence comes from the video itself and Mr. Smith's admissions that it's him. I think that that's legitimate, a legitimate argument to make, but it isn't the only applicable rationale. Some I've addressed some other rationales in the order that you're referring to. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I just. Um... I don't, I don't want to continue to argue with the court. I do think that even if Detective Hunter didn't testify, and, and he will testify, that that link in the chain isn't absolutely necessary when you have a witness that says, I copied those things and gave them to the police, and the police saying, and then you have the defendant saying, that's me on the video. But oh, I, I think those things are all important, but uh, I think that in this case, given some of the other things that have been said, it's it's important to have all the foundational evidence in before I make a final ro ruling. If you if you're fine with the, I just hate to waste the time. We have witnesses that have to testify next week. But I, I understand the first one. Okay, so can we take it that Detective Hunter is going to be the first witness on Monday, or uh, Technician Hunter? Yes. Then we'll have the courtroom set up appropriately by Monday morning. Thank you. Just in case. Okay. Uh, that means if there's nothing else to present today, I'll call the jury in and tell them they're done for the week and come back at 8.30 a.m. Monday morning. Let's bring the jury in. We've got our jury back with us. Folks, uh, some some issues have come up that we're going to need to deal with <coughs> deal with before we hear from the next witness. And so I'm going to let you go for the day and for the week. Uh, we'll we'll take care of those those things and uh, be ready to go again Monday morning at eight thirty. We'll see you then. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, and I think we're going to have to talk about this at our table as well, but um, in the event that the videos are played to the jury, I think your honor said the TV is going to be set up back here. Yes. And then would you, would it be your honors or do we have all, you know, both attorneys and Mr. Smith on the other side of the table? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. We'll, we'll talk about that side of it. Uh, Mr. Smith is comfortable with that and then let the court know on Monday. All right. Thank you. I, I'm not sure what we, uh, what I anticipate <coughs> from the state is the podium being in the well technically will obviously be on the witness stand. 
and then I. So Ms. Nauberger would be questioning from the well at the end so that the videos. TV is going to be here. We'll need to move the podium anyway so they can see. So part of the goal in moving the council around the tables was so that work product and screen your own screens would right. not be visible we'll make sure behind you okay anything else no, thank you okay we'll go off record see you monday morning